Okay, so today we're looking at On One Photo Raw 2019, brand new edition, just out today. Uh, one, of, It's got tons and tons of new features, really a lot of, they really added a lot in this for this year's re release. Uh, but the best feature, I think, is the new ability to layer raw files. That's right, you can now do layered raw files. Uh, so you have all the information available to you at all times, um, really makes for some excellent edits. Uh, so let's just dive in. Uh, I was just up in Oregon last month, shot a bunch of beautiful scenes up there. Um, this is, let's take and we'll do something that's really would normally do, and that's making a, a layered um, blend uh, out of two images. And we'll select two. We'll take this one for uh, the sky and... Let's uh, take this one for the foreground. I think that one works out better. Uh, so we're just going to right click them and say um, open as layers. And it's what it's going to do, while it's keeping the raw files, it's not using these two raw files. It's making a new merge file of both of them in, in layers. Uh, it's more proprietary. And the reason for that is if, uh, say, you wanted to, you have that merged file and now you want to work on one of the original. Uh, raw files, you can do that without it changing your new image. Uh, so you've got a lot of versatility by it doing this that this way. And we're opening up. And the first layer is open, and there's the second layer. Uh, so we can see the top layer uh, is the one that we're going to use for the foreground, and uh, the other one, I'm going to actually reverse them so it makes it a little easier for me. This will be, uh, top will be the sky and the bottom is going to be, uh, we'll use this for the foreground uh, area. Uh, the first thing I want to point out though, is it used to be you'd come over here and there'd be all these different modules to choose from and you'd kind of have to switch back and forth over to this one and it would open a whole new uh, browser and it worked good but it could be a lot cleaner, and they've done that this time. Now they've taken everything. While you're working on a photo, it's all under tabs. You can just switch between the modules instantly. Uh, everything stays in one place. Nothing changes. So it really has cleaned up the interface. Um, so I'm not going to make any adjustments right now. Let's just jump in and make the blend right away. So I'll just grab the uh, masking bug, and let me just uh, change that to... That, bring it down, about there, and I think that should give us what we want. So we've got our mass file, um, we've got the foreground and the bottom here. And now I can go uh, with the uh, top image selected, I'm going to make some adjustments. I think I'll pull down the highlights. And I think it needs a little bit of blacks in the rocks. We'll just bring those down a little bit to see. And maybe we'll sky, give the sky a little bit more vibrance to um, punch up the blues and the yellows just a little bit. Uh, I'd also, I think I'm going to want to make a local adjustment. So while I'm on that layer, I'm going to hop right over to local. Don't have to change modules. And let's just uh, pull this area over here down a little bit. I want to even up the sky. And I think that's about even. And now uh, if I want it done with the, the sky area, I want to work on the foreground. Again, I'm working on the raw file. Uh, so I've s skipped over to switch down to the bottom section. That's our foreground here. And we can... Uh, maybe cut the highlights just a little bit, the exposure down a little bit, uh, just to give us a little bit, um, might give it a little bit of structure and all. And that's pretty decent, quickly made blend of two uh, exposures. Uh, but now let's get a little crazy. Um, and the nice thing here is um, let's throw some effects on. Um, I think I'll take the bottom use the bottom layer to throw an effect, add a filter. Let's do something crazy so you can see it. And, you know, I probably would never do this uh, uh, normally, but uh, how about we'll do cross-process. It was beautiful. It was ultraviolet, uh, ultra 
the weird green, but it works. Well, at least you can see uh, what I'm talking about here. Um, so now we've got that effect on that layer. And, you know, now we have the effect on there. We can still come back. We're right back. We're still working with the raw image. Uh, we can uh, maybe oh, change up the shadows a little bit. Uh, and we can, you know, do all our adjustments uh, on, on that uh, raw file with the filter applied and all. So, you know, let's uh, say we, you know, we're going to leave this. And we want to come back tomorrow. There's no saving it as a TIFF file or a JPEG or anything like that. We'll go back to browse. It will save it as a proprietary uh, photo one file uh, that keeps the, the raw data intact in, in layers. And it just takes a little second for it to save. Though it's not really saving or exporting, I should say, as a TIFF or a JPEG. It's saving the layers. Okay, so we're back in the browse module and you can see uh, here's our file right here. You can see it has the dot on photo uh, file format, which keeps uh, both the raw data for each layer intact. Uh, so let's just uh, take that back into the uh, editing and you can see everything's still there. We can still change anything we want back. Um, change to make all any changes that we want. Everything's intact as just as the raw files are. But, you know, say now we decided, okay, this was stupid putting that cross process on the bottom uh, section in the foreground. Uh, we don't really want that. Uh, so we can do, go, go back to the effects module. Let's turn off that cross process that makes it go away. Let's add a different filter. Let's, how about if we just do a blur on it and uh, let's do motion blur and we'll just kind of drag this like we had a long uh, shutter speed on it and we can kind of drag out this water down here and so now we went and made those changes we didn't have to make another tiff file we didn't have to go back and forth between photoshop and lightroom uh, we just stayed right here uh, we can go back and we can change that bottom and now darken it up a little bit and we can go back to the top section, maybe change that down a little, bring that back a little bit too, uh, just to give a little more cohesion to that. And then we say, well, you know what? I like that blur, but uh, I want to add that cross process back on. And we will, and we add it back on. And now you've got all that, uh, you can, um, change anything you want at any time. It's all raw. It's all 16-bit uh, file, so you can work with it. You've got the maximum dynamic range, so if you want to pull those highlights um, or up or down, uh, you, can, you can really get the adjustment out of them that you want. And uh, that's really the, the, the best part of On1. All raw files, layered, use it as you want. Uh, if you liked what you saw, um, best thing you can do is don't listen to me. Uh, go to the bottom of the um, article and download it for yourself and give it a try. Super simple. It's much easier. If you're having trouble, go to On One site and they have tons of training videos. In fact, if you want to see all the features even more uh, in depth than I've showed you, all the new features of 2019. Uh, just click on the, the link at the bottom of the page. It'll take you on one, and uh, they'll, they'll give you all the information you need. So thanks a lot. Uh, Peter Talone for the HDR image, and we'll see you later.